Right, well, yeah, we might as well get started. Welcome to another um, ACF Chat Fridays. I can't believe it's Friday already. This week has gone very quickly. Um, this is our usual every two weeks open office hours with the ACF team. We record the sessions, we put it on YouTube and we put it, do a blog post um, with the recording and a bit of a recap. Uh, we, I don't think we've got a topic for today. We've got many, many people in the chat. I think we've probably tweeted less than we normally do. Um, but we've got the Q&A, we've got the chat. Uh, Diego, feel free to unmute, ask away. We can, you know, it doesn't necessarily have to be questions. We can just chew the fat on ACF if we need to. Um, and we'll just see how the session goes because if we if we struggle for, for conversation, we might just wrap it up early. But uh, yeah, we are still diligently working on the 6.4 major release, um, which we I think we did cover last time. It's the really uh, the new UI to register ACF blocks, kind of similar to what we did for options pages. It's also um, supporting WooCommerce, the high performance order system. It's also making uh, you have the ability to edit text and text area fields inside ACF blocks that you, you can edit them directly on the block editor screen rather than changing it to edit mode for that block. So kind of a more native editing experience. What else? I don't think we've got any point releases out recently. Uh, we... Oh, we're close to doing the survey. I think that'll be released next week. So we'll probably talk more about it the week after. Um, I'm now waffling. Uh, we, uh, yeah, what's what's going I believe, on? I believe the kids call it yapping these days, Ian. I think that's oh, really, uh, yeah, yapping. I don't think I've heard that. <laughs> that's that's my Twitch side coming out. Oh God, that's right, yeah, yeah. It's supposed to be Diego. It's all on you. How? Uh, you got any questions for us? Inside the editor canvas. Yeah, exactly. The the block editing experience will be for text and text edit fields or text area fields. You'll just be able to click on the text that's obviously rendered in your, your PHP template file for the block. And you'll be able to click on it in the editor in the in the preview mode rather than having to go into the sidebar or move to the edit form. And you'll be able to just click and type and it will sort of sync it between the sidebar and and that so yeah for, for sort of simple text uh fields i think we're going to have to implement something in the 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 block php template that will indicate that you want this piece of data to be editable um but yeah it's the first step of making the editing experience for acf blocks better and much more aligned with like core um, user experience which yeah would be cool oh that is really good really good um, do you guys hear me? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, is it, uh, I am from a um, from a, uh, from White Canvas that is a a, a developer uh, enterprise. We do WordPress on all that stuff, and we recently added like a like a plugin for to do just that. So I guess it's going to be uh, deprecated real soon. Uh, we are applying to to do the editing inside the the editor, and yeah, but that's cool that we can do it uh, from the ACF right now. So oh, nice, that would be really cool. Is that is that a custom plugin that you guys have built, or is that a third party plugin that that, that puts that ability yeah. for ACF blocks? Yeah, yeah, it's a uh, it's a plugin that we built, and it's in beta. But uh, yeah, it was like a trying to do like the canvas editing. Uh, with all the the AC fields, and yeah, yeah. So we are looking forward to this uh, next update to to see these changes you made. It seems really exciting. Nice, yeah, that sounds good. Yeah, I'd love to see what you got, or you know, another time maybe, or it'd be it'd be great to because obviously we've got like the the our vision of making it closer to core UI, but it would be nice to to see how other people would expect it to work. And I know somebody, threw, I can't remember the, the guy's name, but he threw up on Twitter a few months back, some sort of very, very fast and um, bit, a bit of a jQuery hack to make it work like that for simple text fields. And obviously we're trying to re-architect some of the block um, 
code to allow us to make it more close to um, core UI and UX. But like that's this is something we're sort of it's a first step to make that possible, hopefully. Um, but yeah, it's interesting to hear. It's good. It's good validation, obviously, if that's something you've been doing to improve like the editing experience for your clients. Then we're we're on we're on the right track. Yeah. Uh, is this um, functionality is going to use uh, a custom uh, HTML component like the uh, inner blocks? Ah, uh, gotcha. Yeah. Yeah, we're still it, we're still figuring that out. Um, but yes, most likely because that will also give us a foundation to kind of go forward towards yeah, letting you do things more reacty for other field types as well. So you know, if you want to. We're still, you know, we don't know what the future looks like, but ideally we'll also give you a way to edit date fields in line, you know, so you can just click on where the date fields output and it will pop up and show you the date selector and all that kind of stuff. That's obviously longer term, but yeah, it, it's kind of the foundation of that. And obviously it's easier to start with a text input than the, than the select or anything complicated like that. Right. And the most useful, I think, to have the text being added in inside yeah. the canvas. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah, text text is the obvious one, but then everything else that you know, even like an image, for example, if you've got a some sort of hero block and you've got an image, being able to to select it and edit it right there in the block canvas, as you as you, as you say, like it, it that's that's much more like it's an image block really inside another block, and you you replace the image from the you know the the toolbar uh, for that specific block. So yeah, there's so many fields that we've got to work out how to do it properly. But yeah, as you say, text text is the easy one. Cool, real cool. So uh, do, do I take it from from that, Diego, that you're predominantly the sites that you're building are block based um, block sites? You're using ACF blocks. Is that something that you use yeah. all the time? Yeah, yeah, we are using all uh, blocks right now, block themes and full side editing. So we move all the all with the all this structure that we have for our projects. We move all from the old way of doing um, ACF. I think with uh, I, I don't remember the name of the feature, but it was similar. And now we are using uh, full side editing and blocks. Yeah, yeah, and and do you do you typically build? The custom blocks with ACF blocks, and then use them with a combination of core blocks, or is it just a case of you build everything out in ACF blocks and let the client kind of create from there? Yeah, we use a combination of uh, core blocks. Uh, we remove the vast majority, I guess, of core blocks, and then we create ACF blocks for all the things. And yeah. I think it's more, uh, more custom experience to have uh, all the custom blocks. Then make the client, you know, add wraps, groups, and columns, and do all the stuff like that. Yeah. We just build like a left right, a custom left right, and then, yeah, for all the, those things, we use ACF custom blocks. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, because otherwise you you've got clients having to become DIY builders when and it's it takes then obviously longer for developers to then create that layout that then can be quite easily messed around. Um, so I get I get that. Um, is, yeah. is there anything else what you, you you mentioned obviously earlier? You've created a custom plugin to to make that text editable with blocks. Is there anything else similar to that where you've seen you know like oh I'd like to improve that part of ACF blocks or that part doesn't quite work for us and we've had to do something custom? Is there is there any other problem like sort of pain points that we could help to address? Um, well, uh, I guess. Uh, we also did uh, like a resizable sidebar. So for the um, repeaters, we had a problem that it was just too cramped right there. Yeah. And the problem is that we are using full side editor and we are using the iframe in the full side editor. So we can render the, pre the preview view inside the canvas. So we have to do like a resizable sidebar to fix yeah. that basically. But other than that, not really. It just works pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that does seem to be something that we've thought about and talked to WordPress core about as well, because yeah, the sidebar, yeah, when when you're in pre preview only mode because of the iframe issue, the sidebar is the only place to edit. 
and that is tough. Um, but I yeah. don't think from what we when we spoke to core the core team about it they weren't I don't think they wanted to go down that road of making that either draggable or you know a larger size and I think there is definitely uh, an initiative to maybe look at a different editing experience like a different panel or, or, or something or even a modal but yeah I think that's that's where we want to get with the block with the block editor, the preview mode, being able to edit directly there without having to change the form. So therefore, you know, if you're using the site editor and with iframes, you won't have that problem at all because you can be you can edit in preview mode. And even you could you could imagine, I think this is where we're sort of thinking long term, if you've got a repeater field, like maybe it's a a slider and there's I don't know, 20 images in this slider, but the slide is only showing one image. But that's a that's basically built off from a repeater field. You could hover over that one image that is shown, click edit, and then you get the modal up where you have the repeater rows that that show those 20 images that you've actually selected and you can delete them, add them, duplicate them or whatever, and have that the repeater field editing experience in a modal and take it out of the sidebar because that's just yeah too, too hard for depending on the data. Um, but we're kind of working alongside Core just to make sure we make the we make design decisions that are in line with what they are planning as well, rather than trying to do something in our own that is really kind of custom. And then it isn't quite where they're going. And then in a, in a couple of months or years, we're, we're really out of line with what, you know, like, like I said earlier, the goal for us to make the block editing experience as close to core as possible, which means we want to keep in line with them rather than um, do something completely different now. Um, but yeah, we, we'd feel the pain about the, the, the sidebar for editing. Repeaters are a nightmare there. Yeah. Um, do you guys be playing with the interactivity API? I think we did, Liam, you, oh, I know you're muted, but you, we, you looked at it and I think we, did we come to the conclusion that it's sort of not very ACF specific? Yeah, well, <laughs> It's not well. It's not right. So we support it, right? In the sense that you can compile a block with the module, and then everything just works. Um, it's kind of outside of the scope of ACF, really, right? Because you just—it's whatever you put in your template. If you want to make it interactive, you can use the API if you want to. Um, we had some conversations recently, though, about whether we should, because we could use the interactive API as part of the editing experience, right? Like it's when people. If, we, if we're rendering a text that's content editable and you go in and edit it, we could use the interactivity API to be bound to those things to, to let us in ACF blocks know that a field has changed and update it everywhere. So, yeah, it, I mean, we might end up using it. I, I'm not too sure, really, because it depends on how we build our React components there. Um, but I think it's I think it's a good first step. I wish it would have more uh, server-side component stuff right like it feels like you should be able to register a server-side function as well that is attached to something so if you want to yeah update a value or anything like that to save you having to write your own full api fetch stuff but uh yeah it's, it's a good uh, it's a good starting point i think and obviously having to wean folks off of jquery to move towards the react world it's, it's another step in in bridging that gap yeah Yeah, I don't think we've we've heard of anybody using the interactive API, interactivity API with ACF from a user perspective with with anything other than use cases that people might do for normal blocks rather than, like there's nothing that gives it more um I don't know more power just because you're using ACF blocks. It's just I guess it, if you're using metadata then maybe it it works better, but yeah. I think it needs needs perhaps a bit more time within core to mature because everything seems to be released quite rough every release and then obviously gets iterated on right yeah and the interactivity api also needs like a build step that is uh right now a little bit uh experimental so yeah yeah that's yeah. one of the issues so we've got i think uh actually i think it went live earlier this week maybe mike can drop a link in chat uh we did a piece about 
uh, using WP scripts to build ACF blocks and, and multiple blocks tooling. And obviously you have to use some kind of tooling to compile everything. Most people are going to use WP scripts. So yeah, it's just another step of complexity that, you know, a lot of users are still just dipping their toes into blocks, right? They're not ready to go into, Hey, I know what a module JavaScript module is and how to include it and all that kind of stuff. So yeah. Yeah, there we go. It's yeah, in chat. that's funny Just because like... right now I just uh, dated or boilerplate to use the WP, the WordPress scripts as a build step. Before that, we use a custom build step uh, with Webpack, but now right now we are using the WordPress scripts. It's worked really nice, actually. Yeah, I think that's the way to go. We we use it in our, our tooling, basically. We try and do everything as, as close to WordPress as we can. Um, and that's one of the things we're changing in 6.4, we're kind of re rewriting blocks to to feel more like working on Gutenberg, right, where everything is a separate module and, and stores are defined separately and all that kind of stuff. So it just kind of give, to make it easier, to basically, you know, ACF has always been built on like a framework, exactly the same as WordPress, right? We do filters the same way, we do hooks the same way. So needing to be able to, have our own react hooks as well that people can attach to to do things in acf is, is obviously part of the future here as well yeah, yeah cool have you done anything much with the block bindings api diego since it it came out um not really i know about it but um when i saw it i i, I told more of of not needing as we are using acf I don't think we are really needing uh, block bindings um, because, you know, using core blocks is not our main purpose with yeah. not are we using ACF blocks. So, yeah, but I think you can use, I, I can, you can use it with ACF blocks. I don't, I'm not sure the block bindings API. Yeah. Yeah. We, uh, we shipped some, uh, some initial kind of, block binding stuff uh obviously it's all manual at the moment and 6.6 and six doesn't even introduce the the ui for it yet um and all the the annoying part from our side is is we obviously want to do all of the live preview spits that you get with native post meta but all those apis are still private and so they're locked and we can't do it and yeah it, it's yeah obviously it's locked to stop developers using it too early but you can't even kind of force it so we can't even release a preview or or you know, a flag to enable it because you literally have to modify core files to use it. Um, and that will give us the ability to, to, you know, rather than having to show a placeholder that just gets running on the front end, we'd be able to show through JavaScript in the back end the um, the current value that would be shown, right? Because I feel like it's uh, it's kind of missing a piece right now uh, for, for users to feel like they're, you know, in, yeah. the kind of principle of the block editor is, is you get to see what the front end gets and if you can't do that that kind of feels like it's it's not working properly right yeah for sure it's kind of exciting uh, uh wordpress uh the last couple of months with a lot of updates a lot of new apis yeah yeah it seems to be moving fast at the moment but then fast and but then liam said like everything's kind of quite restricted to then build on top of it. So it all comes out and it's new and shiny and customers and users think, oh, how can I use this with X or Y? And then, but you can't really build on, to, on top of it until it's more mature than core. So it's kind of like a bit chicken in the egg. It's It feels like it's kind of like core seems to get a lot of bleeding edge things released to it. But it is exciting, you're right. And it is, it's good. It feels like there's much more momentum in WordPress core development at the moment. For for good for for good and bad though because it's obviously all Gutenberg related, but yeah, it's it's obviously a a good way for people to build sites like yourself. You you leveraging the block editor. You're using ACF blocks and it works. And it's it's like a new normal workflow at the moment. It feels like. Yeah. Uh, alrighty. Did you have any other questions, Diego, or anything else you wanted to share? Sorry, putting all the pressure on you as the soul. <laughs> um, I feel like you probably are our most most attended attended attendee. So thank you for your consistency and for showing up. We appreciate you. 
Oh, no, no problem, no problem. Sorry for holding you, you, you guys hostess here, but uh, I always like to attend this stuff um, and be ready to ask questions. And ACF is a, like the backbone of our, all of the sites or projects. So it's good to be here and ask questions. Yeah, no, it's good. Thank you. Um, okay, what do you want to do, guys? So should we wrap it up now? And then we can just call it a, a nice short one. It's been nice having a chat, Diego. Yeah, I think so. Uh, we've been talking a bit internally about ex expanding these out to, you know, being on YouTube Live and, and Twitch and, and that kind of thing. And see if we can kind of make it a bit less formal than having to get folks to sign up and register, because obviously that's a kind of an entry point barrier, right? So, yeah, we'll uh, we'll carry on with that and hopefully have more more places folks can chat and, and interact with us yeah how would that work actually like would you because we do see this on zoom because it's company way of doing it and it gets put on youtube afterwards but i quite like the registration aspect and getting it and sort of sending emails out of the registration but would you would you want to stream on zoom oh, sorry not zoom youtube or i think it uh, yeah i mean we can have a chat about it yeah, but it does feel like uh, giving folks an easier place to drop in is uh, would help expand the audience. Yeah, yeah, and I think it would be good to sort of go go. You know, we we definitely use these sessions as a discussion place, either based on topics or Q and A or post release or whatever. But I think the things where we had demos, like the Damon demos recently, were quite good. But having like that interactive you're just going to build something or somebody's going to build something and we're just going to talk about it whilst you're going to talk about it whilst you do it. People are going to learn, people are going to ask questions and you can actually sort of deep dive into stuff. That'd be, that would be helpful, I think, and perhaps mix it up a bit in terms of format. Yeah, good. Good to think about. Um, okay. All right. Well, thanks everyone for coming. Thanks, Diego. We will be back in a couple of weeks. Actually, I say that. Have we got... Have we got it in a couple of weeks? Because I feel like something's in the diary. Yeah, there is there is something, isn't there? I remember that. Yeah, it's not in 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 simple. It's not. It's our one of our company days off. Yeah, so we won't be here on the fifth. We will be back. Yeah, on the nineteenth of July. So yeah, bit of a stretch, but we'll give us time to to talk more about it and maybe figure out a different uh, either a different topic or a different format, but. All right, cool. Let's call it. Um, have a good weekend, everyone. Thanks for coming, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.